This is Andy too, and this is Benny. I'm just about finished uh, with the restoration of Benny, the Singer Model 353 Genie. And before I put the covers back on, I wanted to do a final lubrication, make sure I've got everything and that I've wiped up any excess oil. So I thought this would be uh, a good video to do uh, to show you how I lubricate, uh, where and how I lubricate uh, a Singer 353-354. And uh, I'm going to start with all the lubrication points that are shown in the Singer instruction manual for this model. And then I'll go on from there to show you the other places that I do and I'd recommend you do them too. So let me get set up to uh, start lubricating the way it shows in the manual on page 45 and I'll put a link in the description below the video uh, where you can go and get a free download a PDF format a copy of the original Singer manual for this 353. So I'll get set up and be right back. Okay, as I get started here, I just want to remind people to use sewing machine oil on your sewing machine. Um, don't use a household oil, a 3-in-1 oil, a silicone oil. Um, WD-40 is not a lubricant. Uh, it has chemicals in it that break down oil. So if you use WD-40 to free a sticky part on your machine, you really need to clean that out good and get it off the machine before you put any oil on the machine because it'll just break down your new oil. Um, Singer, Singer oil is fine. It's terrific. Uh, I just uh, looked around online and you can buy a 4 ounce bottle of Singer all-purpose machine oil here for about six dollars locally or online where, where I live and I use a tri-flow I'm sorry the the labels worn off here uh, TRI-FLOW superior lubricant and it does have an additive that's a PTFE it's like microscopic type material PTFE so it clings to uh, uh, the metal better it provides a nice thin film and this uh, PTFE um, even lessens the friction when the metals rubbing on the metal so that's why I use it and I saw it online right now for ten dollars and fifty cents for a six ounce bottle and up so it is a little bit more expensive is six dollars for four ounce or ten dollars for six ounce or twelve maybe for this you know but uh, it's worth it to me but if if you want to use uh, a sewing machine oil like Singer or there are other brands that's fine no no problem just use a sewing machine oil so let me get Benny over here and we'll start with, uh, like I said, the recommended um, places where they show in the manual to lubricate Benny. And the first one is up here in the top bushing of the needle bar. Right? The needle bar is going to be sliding up and down through that bushing on every stroke. So we want a nice fat drop of oil up there. Okay. Now, uh, I've already lubricated this and stuff, so this would be like maintenance. 
if you've cleaned the machine or it hasn't been used in a very long time, of course you want to use more than a drop. The second place Singer shows to do it is for the needle bar bushing on the bottom, right down here where, where it goes to the bottom bushing. So I'm going to put a nice big fat drop in there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and just turn the hand wheel, get that distributed a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to move on to the next spot. Singer says put oil. And that is down here. When you look down, you, you take your bobbin out and you look down in the center of the hook, you'll see a little hole. Now, for a long time, I did not put oil there because I had hooks out of the machine and I'm like, well, that hole doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go through down to the to the gear or the bushing below. That's weird. But not long ago, I had a hook out of a machine and I saw that that hole does go to a little tiny hole on the side of the shaft, which goes through a bushing the shaft sits in. I said, well, there you go. Of course, I was wrong not to oil it, and Singer knew what they were talking about. So ever since I saw that, I do put a drop of oil in that little hole. Okay. And as you're oiling, and after you're oiling, you want to wipe up or soak up any excess oil. Like that threw some oil around the hook, around the hole, so I'm just going to wipe that up with a, a cotton bud here. And on my needle bar, I always come down and uh, wipe up right around the uh, needle clamp because it always seems to get down there eventually and get inside there. And someday if you ever want to or need to take that needle clamp off, it's just like glued on with dried oil. But anywhere as you're oiling or greasing a machine, if you slop a little oil around, fine. But just go ahead and use a cloth or, or get back around and wipe up the excess oil. Because all it's going to do is uh, suck up the microscopic thread dust and dust in the air and uh, just muck things up someday. So while you're in here working, that's the time to do it. Now... Surprising as it may be, that's it. That's, that's all the lubrication points in the instruction manual from Singer. Hmm. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. <laughs> wow. So, uh, let's continue on with the realistic um, uh, lubrication here. And... You know, you'll see people say, well, any place metal rubs on metal, lubricate it. And I don't always agree with that. But uh, let's look at it here. If we raise and lower our pressure bar, it goes through a very long bushing here to, to be sure it's nice and strongly supported. So I'm going to raise the the pressure bar up and I'm going to put a drop of oil in there and then I'll lower it down and raise it up and lower it down and try and get that to work in there okay and if I get so much that I see it dripping down here where the where the pressure foot is going to attach I'll just get that excess off okay now another thing that has always been done on singers as long as I can remember is the take up levers. This is a thread take up lever and there's a hmm, there's a, a hinge stud back here that it kind of swivels on and this joint moves and there's a, a hinge screw here and then the extension that comes out to the needle bar and in this machine they are still all metal now some machines 
a couple of these pieces they started making in plastic back back in this part back here so if the connector link over to the hinge on this side is plastic don't worry about oiling that but this has swivel right here this hinge connections like a rivet looking thing and the screw down here and up up at the top there that's all metal on metal and it just moves every single time the needle strokes so I'm just trying to be sure oops I'm in the camera here I'm going to put a drop there and I'm going to sneak that little tube back where that goes around the hinge stud and I'm going to put a drop on this hinge and down here where the needle bar uh, connecting link comes out to the needle bar clamp and that is super important especially on a zigzag machine like this um, because that as the needle bar zigs back and forth you know that that connecting link in here goes in and out of the little connecting link too and it's just a metal cylinder rubbing on a on a metal tube you know so we we want to get that working nice and smoothly okay so I dropped some oil down here on the cover plate I'm gonna go ahead and close that back up and like I said if you get some oil and it runs down back in there just take a, a q-tip or cotton bud and just wipe up kind of excess oil okay now that's a much better uh, lubrication of the front end in my opinion so uh, I'm going to reposition the machine again now and continue on with lubrication so when I'm, I'm looking at the bottom here and in the instruction manual there's nothing about this Wow. <laughs> So, and there's quite a few points here. Um, one thing that I like to do on this model is oil the metal part of the bushing where it goes to the frame. Now, on the older Singers, they had little oil ports at the, at the bed of the machine and, and the upright of the machine that let you get oil right down into those bushings like there's this is the hook right and that that hook shaft goes right up through a bushing and this is the upright uh, shaft and that uh, shaft goes right through a bushing here and I didn't see any place on the bed um, to, to, to get oil to there but it's it's a metal on metal situation so I'm going I, I put a drop of oil on mine and here's the tricky part with these belted machines uh, you don't want how can I get in there you don't want any oil on the belt or the pulley itself you don't want oil on the belt so so I'll try and show you with a, a pointer here and I get the camera maybe I can get this up a little bit and come down on it so here's here's the hook pulley and here's the timing belt and back behind here is where the bushing is and and the the hook uh, pulley uh, rubs right up against it so I want to put a drop of oil there now, if you happen to get some on the belt, don't freak out. Just, just uh, have have a you know have an oil rag, an old T-shirt, whatever you use. Have that ready. So if you do get oil on the belt, just go wipe it off right away. If you get a lot of oil on the belt, I'd put some alcohol on the rag and help get that oil off as much as possible. 
but let's see if I can get a drop of oil down behind there so I'm going to try and put this little tube right against the bushing before I tilt the bottle up now I'm going to tilt the bottle up and watch a drop go in there move the bottle back down then then take my tube away so that gave me a lot more control I got a nice uh, I got a nice oil right in there so while we're on these pulleys uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this upright one now this one is a little easier to do because there's a lot more room back here to get in an oil but right here is the metal base of the pulley that the, that the upright shaft is going through and here is the bushing inside the casting of the machine so right where those two meet I want to get some oil I'd like to get it in the bushing but like I said I didn't see any way to do that on this model so I'm at least going to get some where the metal metal on metal is Okay, then I'll spin the hand wheel again and try and work that in. Now I did I did pretty good. I got a little tiny bit up there on the side of the casting, so I'll just wipe it up. Okay. So that takes care of the two pulley bushings and the shaft bushing and stuff. But what about all these other uh, feed? lifting and feed rocking and the feed bar here and everything these all have uh, metal bar ends going into a bushing where they the swivel back and forth and then the feed bar is connected with with a link that hinges I always say swivel but it's a hinge actually and then down here at the base of the feed bar where it connects to to the other so one shaft lifts the feed dog and the other shaft rocks it and then both of those shafts connect to the feed bar which up top maybe if you can see those two little holes right there at the underside of the feed bar up top is where the feed dog is so that's where they screw in at the top so all of these uh, lifting and rocking we've got one two three four five right here around the hook one two three four and then at the big one five okay and if you have other vintage machines and you have their instruction manual uh, if you open them up and look at them where it says lubrication or oiling the machine you're going to see that most of the machines are going to have instructions to do just what I'm doing right here I, I kept looking when I looked at this genie manual I kept looking at the page numbers thinking uh, it must be missing a page now you see how I'm just kind of dabbing up the the excess oil here because I don't want it flying around and I don't want to collect in a bunch of stuff right okay so now we're basically gonna have the same thing over at this end okay here's the fork feed connection coming down and it hinges here and this main shaft is anchored here and there and they this one hinges and this one that kind of hmm, rocks in that bushing and then up at the top on the rocker it it comes in remember we did the other end of that way over here so we're going to do this end and we're going to do where where it hinges on the other connecting bar that comes from the top that makes this thing rock and lift so I've got one two three four on this side 
five on the other, but only four here. So starting at the top, I'll go one, two, three, and four. I really like these little extension tubes. And I see oil. When I was online today, I saw little four and six ounce bottles of oil with a big old tube and a nozzle on it. Well, big long tube, longer than mine. And it talked about, you know, it's got like a 14 inch reach and it's pure sewing oil. Those are great. That That's fine. I know very popular, uh, when I was at a... Um, company that was making ballistic seat covers for US military vehicles all their machines their commercial machines they use Lily brand uh, sewing machine oil and said that they they thought it was great they just loved it and they bought it by the gallon hmm. so that is where I lubricate the bottom end of the genie. So I'm going to set it back up here and we're going to take a look at the top because we there is a place to put grease and we want to put some grease and some oil up there. Okay I have my camera up on stilts <laughs> so I want to uh, get ready to lubricate the top end of the machine now and to do the best job I want to remove this handle bracket. Okay and uh, there's four screws for it. I'm missing one, but there should be one, uh, two, should be one here where I'm missing, three, and if you will turn your tension, thread tension, all the way to the left, you'll see under that uh, dial down there, there's one more, the fourth screw that holds this plate on. Okay. So, I think I'll start with that one, and uh, that's a tricky little guy. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, this is a good one to use it on. Um, I don't, but I got this little telescoping magnet pen thing from the dollar store, so I'm going to put it down in there and use it. I've dropped the screw in there before and you can eventually dig it out, but it's just easier to grab it like this for me. Okay, so I'm going to remove these other two and then we'll get started. Alright, so you're seeing why you got to have to you take that back cover off. You have to take the nose cover off to get the back cover. And the back cover is really also the top cover comes over like that and the handle slides into this bracket and that's what supports it. But with the cover off and now the four screws for the bracket out, the bracket just lifts right up like that. No big deal. Okay. Then when we come in here, we can see our cam stack and our follower and pat pattern follower. The little goose head or duck head down in there, right? Okay. And we can look at these uh, slide things when, you, when you're sliding your tension here. You see that? Or that's the, uh, not tension, I'm sorry, that's the stitch width that connects to the needle bar driving arm up here. You can see that arm moving, the needle bar, right? So there is a metal guide that slides along metal here and it hinges down in here okay and then this this is the tension uh, I, I don't oil this part of it even though it's a slide because I'm always worried of getting oil on plastic they say this oil is safe so if you want to put a little oil on there it's supposed to be safe. I just don't trust the old plastics. Okay. But I am going to put a drop of oil where this uh, tension release slide is. See that? See how that 
bar slides inside there. So with it all the way over to the left, I'm just going to put a drop of oil right kind of all along that slide. Oh, you can't see it, sorry. I'll put a drop of oil on that slide and then I'll turn that dial back and forth to kind of work it around in there. Get some nice oil in there. And it's not like you're changing your tension all the time. So it's more like getting a layer of oil in there. So someday when you do t change your tension, <laughs> those two pieces will move. Okay. Then let's look at that um, slide here. See that? How it slides along? So just put your stitch width at, at zero or straight stitch and put a drop of oil up by that slide and then just move the lever to the widest stitch and back a few times. Get a nice coating of oil spread around in there. And then I'm going to turn the machine around here and try and show you this where that lever hinges there's a brace and a nut and uh, that's what hinges right in there. So I'm going to drop a little drop of oil down there on the metal right by that nut. Then I reach around the front of the machine. See what I'm talking about, how it moves there? Okay. Now this stuff under the covers uh, unless you just really sew a ton, I, I think once a year is going to do you pretty good up here. The, the needle bar, um, you know, once a week if you sew quite a bit. Not as often if you don't. But let's say uh, after every project you, you wipe it off with your lint brush and get all the lint out and put some oil in there so you'll be ready to go next time. But all the stuff at the top and the bottom, maybe once a year, is going to do you good. Okay, so we've got that. Let's, this part, this is left, center, right. And behind that plastic um, part that you grasp, there is a steel plate in there that moves against the steel lever and they're screwed they're screwed together with like a uh, hinge screw so you got metal on metal there and I drop a drop of oil there and again you know some people might go a year before they move their left center right but I want some oil in there so when that day comes you can move it and not say hey why why won't this move <laughs> So it's got a nice little layer of oil, nice drop of oil. I'm going to mop up the excess because I really got kind of two drops there. Okay, then we've got this selector here, which is for your different stitches, multi-stitch, blind hem, zigzag. And as we move that, you'll see what's moving up here. Now there's a plastic part here, and I and again I don't put oil on that. Mm -hmm. But you see where this hinges back here? You've got your aluminum casting with a steel uh, lever that hinges on it, held in by a steel screw. So right at the head of that screw, I'm gonna tilt this back and I'm going to put a drop of oil in there and then I'll just move that a few times and get that going okay and then where this moves the the follower and and the part that uh, locks out the zigzag so you can straight stitch that's hinging a metal on a metal bar that goes in there. So I'm going to put a drop of oil up at the top there. Put a drop in that little hole and next to it. And then let's see if that, yeah, that does that just really lifts. So that's about it for there. Okay. 
Now, uh, back here is where we want to do some more oiling. Okay? See if I can get closer in here and show you this. Uh, maybe if I move it like that. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the top fork on the forked feed connection. It's like a little fork that goes around the elliptical so when the arm turns you see how it drops down and comes back up? That's what makes that rocking and lifting motion on those uh, levers and shafts below. So I'm going to put a drop or two of oil on that. Because the metal fork on the metal elliptical just turns all day long when you're sewing. So they're highly polished. But let's put a little oil in there just to lubricate it. Mm -hmm. Now where the other shaft connects here you see an oil port right there okay and, and because it's it's like this and it's going to be swiveling on the arm it's just rocking back and forth on that arm so in that port that little hole I'm going to put a drop of oil and I'm going to work that around in there and if you see the oil just gets sucked down in that hole and disappear that means it's pretty dry so I would put another drop of oil in that hole and then I would rotate it and if, if you have your machine plugged in and if you trust yourself you won't get electrocuted you can run the motor at a slow speed I just always turn it by hand now see I put so much oil in here now I'm getting a little air bubble come up so that thing is pretty full of oil but it like I said if you put a drop of oil and you're turning it and that oil just right down in there put another little drop okay now here's the tricky part right here uh, see I don't know if I can yeah without taking the camshaft out you can't see it too much but maybe you see the gear right here this is the vertical gear on the horizontal shaft and it goes down and mates up with the gear below it that's at the top and um, I'll tell you in this machine my gear really looks metal the, the top of the vertical shaft it really looks metal but with this kind of grease that I use, this would be an occasion very rare that I put any grease on a plastic gear. And it's because it mates up with a metal gear here. So I use the TriFlow product, and this is clear synthetic grease. Okay? And it also has the PTFE. Unlike a lot of these places where they just squirt a big old glob of oil all over, I use a little stiff artist brush. I buy a five or ten pack of these varied brushes at like Walmart or Target. And I use the stiffer one. I'm going to get a little glob of grease on there. And I'm going to go right down and just kind of gently brush start brushing it on the teeth of that gear okay and that glob I showed you which should do about half of the of the gear let me do another little bit on here see that it's just it's it's not much at all right and I'm gonna spread that around now if you get it on the shaft or you get it on something else you can go in with your cotton bud or your q-tip and you can wipe up the excess because you don't you don't want it there hey okay now the hardest thing to get to on this machine is the worm gear down here 
This worm gear is machined right into the horizontal shaft and it mates up with the gear that's on the bottom of the cam stack. So if you can get the grease brush and brush on the cam stack gear and then turn this until you see it spreading into the worm gear and then add a little bit more at the base and turn it till you see it go until you make a full revolution and the gear coming around here you see already has grease okay now if you want you can take this off and you can lift off all the cams and get a little bit better view but it's really not required in my opinion if you're careful and you use a brush okay so I'm just going to put a little bit more on here see these little dinky amounts I use and I'm going to gently go in there and stick it right above that worm gear and brush it towards me and flip it over and brush it toward me that way in my opinion I'm getting some along the whole length of the worm gear okay then I'm going to turn my uh, hand wheel you know five or ten times and get that worm gear spreading around really the idea is you you would want to turn this 360 okay so like here's your here's your pattern multi-stitch pattern block and and you just turn that until it goes like halfway around okay see it's over here now and then I'm going to add some more and get it in below the cam and above that worm gear which is about that long and I'm just gonna brush it right along the top of the worm gear okay and then I'm gonna rotate until the other like 180 degrees at least okay now some people have a hard time or they're nervous about getting that grease onto the worm gear so uh, see if I can get some better lighting in there oops <laughs> I got the lighting but you can't see it <laughs> right down there is the 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 whole base of the camp stack is like a big gear and it's about as big around as a half dollar and it mates up with the worm gear so if you're uncomfortable trying to get in on the worm gear just put small amounts down here like this and brush it on the gear on the base of the camp stack okay and then turn it and then brush a little bit more add a little bit more to your brush and keep turning it so instead of the two brushfuls on the worm gear use a smaller amount and you might have to use five or six little dabs to spread it on the base but those two gears meet up right so if you get if you get um, grease on the camp stack gear it's going to transfer to the worm gear and if you get grease on the worm gear it's going to transfer you know over to the camp stack gear and I got a little grease here on the shaft that I just want to wipe up okay I'm real real picky about that but it's not going to do any good uh, grease that's not on the gear that's the only place that grease belongs is on those two gears so and and then of course the the first gear that I did so somehow I got some spilt over to the shaft now this grease is good about clinging to the metal but uh, it can still get thrown off you know if you run your machine high speed it can still get flicked around so that's why you don't really need to put globs of this stuff like like I don't know if you saw when I opened this machine up in the beginning of the series all that waxy brown grease somebody just squirted all over the place in there I could just see some 
shop charging somebody you know 75 or 100 bucks and popping the cover off and going and say okay it's all lubed you know <laughs> I'm sorry I don't I don't I'm, I'm sure there are terrific service centers and service shops and stores I'm sure there are just never found one myself okay now one last place that I like to put oil and again there's usually an oil port for this but I'm, I'm on the back side of the machine now right and you see that this main horizontal arm shaft goes right through a casting part on the body and there's a bushing in there that that shaft goes through and then it goes into the to the hand wheel okay and usually right up here someplace is a little hole that you you squirt oil into to keep that bushing lubricated so I don't know uh, you know I thought maybe they didn't do it I thought well maybe these bushings are all plastic but when I fool around with the edges of them they are hard metal okay so I want to get some oil in there I'm going to put it a couple drops on each side of that bushing here is where the shaft is going into and out of and then I'm going to turn that hand wheel and that oil is going to work in there and I just feel better knowing that that main shaft which is carrying all this weight and doing all this work um, you know has and that bushing supporting it all it's got some lubrication then I'm gonna just go along and wipe up the outside of it because that oil out there is not doing any good okay that is how I lubricate at Genie 353 and 354 and I think I covered I didn't make notes I I, I just uh, I think I covered all the spots that I want to lubricate um, let me see because the motors there there is one more here I just thought of it I, I forget on the genie you can access the feed regulator and slide block from the back side here let me see if I move that lever can you see this uh, this can you see this part right there move when I there right there here's the forked feet connector thing right and there's a little slide block on that that goes in the feed regulator if you happen to see that video but that's um, the metal U-shaped regulator is sliding on the rectangular block and those are both metal and uh, I will put a couple drops of oil in there right where the two pieces meet and then I'm going to go from long stitch to short to long to short what's called exercising the pieces and that way I've got some oil on the moving part of that regulator I'm glad I remembered that okay folks that's it thanks for tuning in uh, like I said I'm almost done with the genie restoration for those of you who are who care or are following along I'll get it up here and do any little final adjustings check everything and then I usually do a sew off video to see how it sews and then I usually do a slideshow of the machine all purdy at the end so if you're interested come back for those or come back for any of my 400 plus videos Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you again. Take care.